Today I'm going to show you how to make an interactive PDF, which is useful for teaching online and you can use them on interactive whiteboards as well. Let me show you some examples first. Now normally the students would have PDF Foxit Reader, which is free. This is the best one for reading these PDFs. However, you can also use the Adobe DC, which is also free. So here you can see a book. It has 179 pages. But what I'm going to do, and I do this every time I teach, I extract the unit and then manipulate it. Here you can see unit 5, where I've made an introductory page. And here we can get the students to move and interact with these words. Normally you wouldn't see it in two-page view. It would normally be like this. And both the students and I would try to analyze which is which and move them around. Excellent starter. Now this next page, I've mirrored it so you can see what was before and after. And they asked us to make adjectives of these countries. So all I simply did was put the countries on the left hand side and now the students and I can write the endings for these words. Also you can change the colour of the font as you can see. Next they asked us to identify which meal goes with which country and simply by clicking on the hand tool I made these words interactive. So Indian would be curry, snails would be French, etc, etc. Now on this next page, you can see we were asked to make this chart and fill in with these words. Now that can take time if students having to write the words and things are done online are always slower. What you can do is simply make this page as I did. Once again, it would be the only page in view. And I simply copied over exactly this phrases. So I, I copied over the image, really. And I made this table. And now the students can say, OK, apple pie is dessert, chocolate mousse is dessert, steak would be main course. And we do it that way. On the same page, which I've mirrored here, there was this task here to put the sentences in order and I wanted to make it interactive so they could actually physically put them in order. So here you can see I've already done some of that. You should try the roast duck. Um, would you like a dessert maybe next? Thank you very much, that was a lovely meal. Is it in the right order? Well, the students can move them around and decide which one should go where. So I made that interactive. Now what we can do, because we have the audio embedded, we can check the order of these words. Remember, Foxit Reader is the best for this, and I'll show you a link on how to add these audio files into the PDF. It comes up, remember this choice until I close, if you don't click that, it will constantly just come up. Unit five. So what I mean by this is, if I click it again, the warning comes up again, unless you click this button. Unit five. Food and entertaining. Track 65. Would you like a starter? I'd like the soup, please. Okay. What do you recommend for the main course? You should try the roast duck. It's delicious. Okay, and I can just simply pause that if some people haven't got it. And then click continue. Would you like a dessert? No, thanks. I'm full. Okay, and the next two, would you like a dessert? No, thanks. I'm full. And there you have it. Now, the same goes for Adobe Reader. So here we can actually play the PDF, but you do have to say it's okay. 
So here you see, do you trust this document? And you would say, trust this document always. Unit 3. Problems. And there you can see. But unlike Foxit, the image doesn't go away until it's actually finished. There you go. So that's Adobe Reader. Now, also, I want you to make notes. Here it says, students turn to page 130 and another one turn to page 140 in order to do this activity. Now, this can be a pain. It's okay if they have the book at home, but some students might not have the book with them. And you can see what I did is I made two extra pages here in order that student A would go here and student B would go there. Now, in order to make sure they go to the right page, I used the Foxit linker, which is free with the free version. You just make a link and student A would click on this and there's student A. When he's finished, he clicks there. Student B would click on this. And when they finished, they would click back as well. Now in this unit, students were asked to discuss with one another what they want from a job. So I simply created this box and as they talk to one another, the students can simply add these, say, well, I want travel opportunities. Oh, so do I, I like that too. Long holidays? Yes, I would like long holidays and so would I. And I'll show you how I made this with all these uh, multiple words. So for instance, I made sure there was four in case four of them wanted long holidays. Now here's an example of the proficiency book that I had to teach from the other day. And I simply, as you can see, I simply copied these items and put them on the list here so that people could move them to wherever they wanted. And I'll show you how I did that. Now here we have a reading and with these readings, always the question one belongs to paragraph one. So what I did, I simply made these individual pages. If I put them on the individual page, so we can analyze the first question, the second, the third, the fourth, fifth, and the sixth. And we can focus on the vocabulary there. Also, there was this idea of um, different kind of phrases used in writings. Here they said, find the phrases. Well, there's no room to find phrases. So I created a new picture like this. And they can say, okay, here is a simile. And they can simply go to the comment file and use the underlying structure and say, okay, I think wind is a simile, even though it's not. Uh, howled is a kind of, um, what is that? It's a kind of personification. So then they can go to the hand tool and move personification down there. And they can do this task. In this page, you can see the text rolls onto the next column. And all I did was simply put it all together on this second page and made it more executable. So for instance, they can move the words here, they can move any words they choose, or we can do it together, but at least we're checking it together. Here again, there's a reading. Remember part A is in the first chapter, but I can't cut it up exact as I did before. So all I simply did is made a fresh page with both areas on it and highlight some of the text. Well, actually you can't highlight it here. You can highlight it here, but you can always draw a text box around the word. You can say, oh, okay, I think this is the phrase that relates to this question. Finally, let's look at the children's book I was using. Now, as you can see, this page is rather full. There's a lot going on here. And they ask us to do this small area here and check which word is which. Sure, you can say this is number five, this is number six. Better to get them to do it themselves. And here I made these words movable so that the kids could move it to the right place. And they did that. Also, we have a listening. Once again, we can press the listening. We're asked to play it. One. 
and they're asked to spell a word. You wear this to keep warm in the water. And then they'd have to write it out. Here you can see the next part where you've got this kind of area here. They've been asked to match the items with the day. A with day one, B with day two. That's a bit boring. So I just simply copy and pasted them here. And now the students can say, OK, campsite put up tents. Oh, that's this one. And they can move it. And I can check if they know the right words. You can visit cheese. OK, cheese. So that should go there. So we can do it together. It's good, really good for kids. Here it can be confusing because you've got text and then these questions here. So I simply move the questions here over to here with the text. So now we can focus on that one activity. Then they ask them to find out these words in the text. Once again, I simply made it into one page and we could draw arrows to identify which word is where. If you click on these arrows, you can say, OK, this word is here and this past simple verb is here, etc, etc. They can write them out as well. Obviously, using the text typewriter, they can write out whatever they like. And remember, you can change the size of this to anything you want. Now, in this example, there was a story and I thought it would be confusing for them. So I simply copied the story here and actually put the Polish translation of the words as copied from Google. Sure, not all of them are going to be wonderfully correct, but I was able to say to them, OK, byliśmy gotowe. What does that mean in English? Can you say it in English? Yes, we are ready. And I can check their knowledge of past simple verbs because they didn't seem to be comfortable with them. Next, here's the workbook asking them to connect it with the main book. Now that's a lot of jumping around for them. So all I simply did, so that we could do it together online, take out part one and put it here and then just put arrows to where the answers to these questions might be because they did find it difficult and that helps even the ones with low ability to be able to not freak out that oh I don't know where to read or what to look give them some area of focus and this worked really well online the same with part two read the definitions find them in the text well instead of again jumping book to book I simply copied it pasted it and then here, place where people put up tents. Well, we're looking for the word campsite, so hopefully they will have done that. We can go to the comment, get the highlighter tool, and there it is, campsite. So, there are the examples. Now, let's move on to how we're going to do this. Now the first thing you're going to need to do is to download both the PDF Exchange Editor and the Foxit Reader. The Foxit Reader, you simply go to this web page and remember when you install it, they'll allow you to download it, but when you install it, make sure that you install the free version and don't go for the trial. So here's the setup, but don't install the trial, just go for the free version, that's all you need. Now regarding the PDF Exchange Editor, you can buy it for a very cheap price. But for our experiment, we're just going to download, if you click download, it's 333 megabytes, you can see there, 335 megabytes. And then you can install it but then just don't put in the code which you need. You just keep using it as a free user. You could also do what I did and just download the portable version with OCR. So what that means is if you don't pay the 39 euro, you can simply install it as a free version 
whereby if you do any professional editing, which we're going to do, you will end up with these two watermarks. Now that is a very minimum price to pay because I don't care about these watermarks. They don't get in my way. It means I can use this PDF um, editor to its full extent. Excellent stuff, especially for online, because that means all of this page is free. Now these are the steps we're going to take. Four steps, but really three, because the audio is going to be linked to another video I've made. First we need to extract pages, then we're going to copy and paste text, draw lines, and then finally we're going to show you how to add back pages and do this jump where you jump to the next page with linkers. So it's very simple, I'll try to do all of this on the business book only, you can work out the rest later. So let's jump over to the business book. So let's start. Here we have the PDF of the Market Leader Elementary. And what I want to do is extract Unit 5. But before we do any of that, we have to sort out this ribbon and make it look the way we need it to look. For instance, I need to see the thumbnails. So here is an overview of what we're going to do. We're going to switch from the ribbon look, which is this look, to the classic tools look, which is this. And as you can see in red, these are all the tools that we need to use and they're all available at the same time. So this version is much better or this viewpoint is much better. And we also need to click on this in order to bring up the thumbnails so that we can make extra pages. So let's go and do that now. First of all, let's change the ribbon look. Go to the top right and switch to classic toolbars. And there we can see all the tools we need. And next we need to click on the options down here in order to see the thumbnails. So now we can see the thumbnails. We can click on the first page and then the last page. And while I click on the last page, I'm holding the shift button. And there they are highlighted. Now I can simply right click and extract them. You see, it wants you to pay, so I'm gonna end up with a PDF with markers on it. But let's do that anyway. It's selected, all, you, you just go with the default and say OK. It mentions there'll be a watermark on it, yes. And now here is it saved in this document. I'm simply going to drag it into this area. And there you can see our little watermarks. But like I say, they're not really a problem and they give us full functionality. Now you can see I have eight pages. So this is the document I'm working with. So here we are and we're going to manipulate this document to be more interactive. So let's zoom in and the tools we're going to use are the snapshot tool and the text tool. Now if I click on the text tool, you can see that I can highlight this text. If for some reason you have a photo image of your document and you need to be able to do this, what you need to do is go to document and click OCR the page and it will do that for free. So I can just say the current page only because all the others are already, uh, let's say OCR'd and I just click OK and then it does the OCRing. And this is for free actually, they don't put a watermark on it when it does this. So now I'm gonna simply highlight these words, press Control C, copy, or I guess you can right click and copy, you can see Control C, and then go back to the hand tool 
and click Control V and paste them. Now you'll notice that this has a red line around it, which I don't want. It's because it considers it to be a text box. Now in order that all future text boxes do not have a red line around them, what I can do is I have to click on the actual text box here, where it says text box, and say um, no points, no points, okay? So now you can see I made a text box and there's no red mark around it. And if I copy that text again, this time, control C, copy, hand tool and paste, you'll see that there's no line around it. So I can delete this one and every text I write from now on, this text box will not have a line. Now what I'm going to do, I want all the countries to be in a, in a row. So what I'm going to do is just simply double click inside and make sure that I click enter in every one. Okay, so now we have our countries, but they're a bit close together. And what's great about this software is if you double click in there, you get this line here. This is why you need the properties bar open and you can make them this far apart or this far apart. I think that's good enough. So I'm going to click outside and I can use this tool here. In fact, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to simply uh, make some dots and I can copy that and then just go paste them on everything else. Copy, paste, copy, paste, copy, paste. Now, if you touch this, you can move it around. We don't want that. So what we do is we can actually go up here and select comment, flatten. We want to flatten it. But that will flatten every comment on this page. And we might not want to do that. Otherwise, we can just individually flatten that box. So nothing else is flattened. Okay, and so now when the students want to type on it, remember they're going to be opening this in Foxit Reader, so the, the typing is a bit different. So don't worry about them having to write from here. Now in this part, we're going to match the dishes to the adjectives. So what we're going to do is line up the adjectives, but instead of doing it the way we did it before, I'm going to show you a very quick way. Click on the snapshot tool. Highlight over it, control V. Highlight over it, control V. Highlight over it, control V. Okay, so now I've got all my countries. Click on select comments, and that's all of them there. So I'm going to move them here. I'm just going to move them down here. And what I can do is, I haven't finished moving them around. But what I can do is highlight them all, make sure one is as high as I want it to be and the other is as low as I want it to be. And I highlight them all, right click and go to arrange. And I'll say, you know what, distribute vertically. Ta-da, did it for me. I didn't even have to do it. Also, I can even say distribute with the edges on the left. Left align edges, perfect. So now all I have to do is I can just flatten them. So let's select them all and just flatten. So those are now flat. They're not movable, nothing can happen. But what I do want to be movable is these dishes. So I'm gonna do the same again. And this time, Now you might think, oh, this takes a long time, but you can keep this forever. This is going to be useful for all the lessons you teach on food. And the reason I do this copy pasting with the camera is 
if you look, I can put the food exactly on the word and it shows you exactly how to line it up, which is great. So very quickly I can do that. Now the reason I don't do it another way, some people might try uh, copy paste using the Windows window key shift S key. Now if you paste, you get this big icon and I don't like that and then you have to resize it. Much better to use this snapshot camera tool here. Sushi, snails and curry. And so when we have our activity, we can simply say, okay, well, let's save this document. When we have our activity, we can simply say, okay, which, which item is which? And say, okay, Chinese, well, that would be uh, sweet and sour, okay. American, that would be the burger. Indian would be the curry, and so on. And obviously, you can uh, add lines to this later. In the next one, I'm going to show you how to add these lines in order to make uh, a division much better, if you have the time, that is. So, in the next page, once again, they're asking for us to do something here. In this one, obviously, you can just use the tools that they write on here. Which one is the odd one out? And the student can actually put a circle around it. Okay, onion is the odd one out. And then they can write some text because it's a kind of vegetable. And they can write something here. Now this next one, I've shown you, I'm going to make another page in order to do this exercise. They want us to write the dishes under the headings, but there's no room. Okay, so let's right click, insert page, insert empty page, and make sure that the page is landscape and A4. Click okay. And remember, if it's not in the right place, you can move it around. I'll just put these side by side so you can see and I can move it here. And what I might do is make another page just so that you can see what I did to make the other page. I just held the control button and then moved the item. So that way, oh, I've done it again. Let me delete that one. Okay, so here's our image that we're trying to make. And Please make sure that you go in as close as you can when you do the snapshot. If you were to do this and then paste it here, it wouldn't look good. It looks blurry, you can't read it. So the idea of the camera is the closer you are, the better the picture. So if I do this with the snapshot, And then I go back here, whoops, I keep, I'm still on the snapshot. Now it will remember the last snapshot I did. So if I do control V, it's just gonna post uh, this stupid image. So what is a good way to do it is if you're on a Windows, hold the Windows key and a V and it will show you your last clips. You can see that's a blank, a blank. This is the one we wanted. And here's our text. And as you can see, it's nice and sharp. And what we want to do with that is we're going to flatten it. And now there are meant to be lines of division and I'm gonna click on the line and in the properties section, I'm gonna make sure that it's black. So the line will always be black. And I'll also make it two point. So it will always be two point. So I'm gonna come in here. When you draw a line, it's a bit wobbly. You think, oh, I've not done it properly. What you do is make sure you hold shift and then you get these straight lines that you can use. So once again, shift. Once again, shift, hold it, shift, and then you've got straight lines. 
So now, like we did before with the other group, you simply snapshot all the images and then drag them over. So I'll do that and we'll jump to the end of this. So remember, zoom in as close as you can and snapshot. Okay, now they're all snapshot in the same area. Get the selected comments and simply drag a highlight over it. Make sure you get this white X so you can move them all and we can move them all to the next page. And once there in the next page, we can simply move them around where we like. Or we can do that trick I told you where you have one at the lowest end and you simply highlight them all and say arrange uh, distribute vertically there you go so they're all kind of distributed but you can just move them around a bit more and there you go and then you have your exercise for the students to do also if you do want to make them larger you can always just do that and make them bigger should you wish. So that's how you make that page. Now the way I made this movable sentence is pretty much the same. You just copy or snapshot the images, but there's no room. So what I did is you go in as close as you can, make a snapshot of this image, Control V, but then just hide it above somewhere because what we want you to do now is to make this image white. And in order to do that, go to your text box. Now remember, when you clicked on the text box, you made it permanently zero point. So I can draw a text box around this and there's no red line. Go to my hand tool, right click, and flatten the image. Now, I can move my image back here and then I flatten it once again but this time I use the snapshot in order to create these pieces of information and remember just do control and V I won't do them all and as you can see you can line them up directly on top of the image and then you click save and there is your worksheet ready for people to manipulate and do it interactively. Now before I show you how to do this linking thing where you jump to another page, that is used with Foxit, not with this PDF exchange. What I will show you is how I made this image and how I made multiple words to go on each one. Obviously, it's easy how to make this box. You simply click on the line, hold shift, and draw these lines like this. Four, five. But you might think, oh, shouldn't they be all the same width? Okay. Select the comments, right click in the middle, go to arrange and make same width. There you go. And maybe align them to the left. Align edges to the left. Some of them still don't look the same width. If they don't, you can redo that bit. At the moment, they all look the same width, which is cool. Now, what I did to make these multiples, you simply, when you have one of them, this is one, you simply press Control C, then Control V four times. One, two, three, four. So now I have four of them. And that is how I did that. Now, in order to make these links work properly, we're going to have to use both Foxit and PDF Exchange. 
as I noted here, to, to add a back page, you need to use the exchange. To jump to different pages, we need to use Foxit. Now what I need to do is to make two blank pages, one for student A and one for student B. And I could make these pages at the end of the document, so they jump there, but I can always make them into uh, the next page. It's not a problem. So here I am, but remember we've got our document here, so it's gonna be after this page. So I'm gonna right click and insert two empty pages this time. And you can see two blank pages. Now what I have to do is go to my book, which is here, and copy and paste that image in. So it was page, I think it was 130 and 140. Remember this is unit five. So there's page 130. Remember we have to get in as close as we can. And this is our text. Simply do the snapshot. Go back here, click on the empty page. Control and wheel mouse helps you zoom in and zoom out. And I simply press Control V, paste it in, make it as large as I can. And remember to right click and flatten. Next we do B, which is on the next page. This time move to page 140. Here again we click the snapshot. Go back here, control V and make it as large as we can and right click to flatten. Okay, so now we've prepared our pages to jump to. Once I click save, the lines come up, but that's okay. So now let's save this document and open it in Foxit Reader. Okay, now I simply have to open this file in Foxit now. There are our icons, and let's zoom down to that page. Here's our extra pages, and there we need to put our links in. Don't be frightened to zoom in, control wheel, go to the home tab, and you will see the link. And you can simply make it red, dashed, one point, next. Now I have to scroll to that page. and it will copy it exactly as I'm looking at the page. So I like it to look like this, set position. And now if I just check, there it is. What I could do is make another one in red to go back to that page. So next, and I simply go up and I'll zoom in a little bit and say that. So now, I can click that and I can click that and I can go to that page and obviously you do the same for student B except this time maybe you'll make it blue just to be different and student B's page is here so you'll click there and then make another link back to the page for student B. And remember to save. So there I can click, I'm A, click back and I'm student B. Perfect. Hi, I'd just like to show you a few things with the proficiency book. Obviously, 
copying these icons may have been difficult because they're at an angle. But as you can see, when you do copy them, you can simply diskew them and make them different. But one thing I want to show you is with the reading, as well as copying and pasting and making extra pages, you could actually just not do that and make the pages split. And what I mean by that is I want to read A, this part, and also this part. To do that, right click, go to Custom Tools, Commands, and type in Split. And there, drag in Remove Split. There's Remove Split. Now let's see if I can add horizontal split. There we go. Close that. And now I can click horizontal split. And now I can move this up, focus on this text here, and also focus on the first paragraph. And that way we can do two things at once. How brilliant is that? And simply remove the split and it's gone. Finally, I'd like to just show you how I did this text. Here, remember we had this box here and this box here. It's so annoying. Just make it like this. And all I simply did, I'll show you how I did it. I'll make a fresh page. There's our fresh page. Let's see if it's together. Yes, it is. Copy the instructions, which were here. I'm going to remove this. Snapshot the this. Paste it here. I can even make it bigger. And I'll probably flatten that as well. There you go. For the text, I can simply select the text, Control C, go up here, Control V, and there's my text. However, it isn't as I would like, and all the lines have gone. But let's get the other one as well. So let's delete that, select the text, control C, and control V. Now you might think, well, that doesn't look good, but I know that after each number, there is a line. So that's easy to fix, just to, well, first of all, let's zoom out. Let's make the text a bit bigger, maybe 16. Let's zoom in. And I simply make a line. Now, you notice this box, you can stretch it out so it's wider. And that way, I can just Control C, copy, paste, paste, paste. You get the idea, and that's how I did it. Also, you can always backspace so that you make it larger. And that's how I kind of did that. Obviously, at the end, you have to flatten it so that when you make these snapshot words, and let's say you put one in here, you flatten it, so that they can move these words here. And that's how that was done. So that's that. I hope you've enjoyed that and learned something about how to make an interactive PDF. Remember to check out my how to add audio to PDF in this link here. And also check out my other videos on how to make your textbook into a PDF. I have a number of videos on that that you can see here. So, see you on the next video.